Here's a secondary question. We heard Kevin talk a little bit about this earlier on, and I think it was an excellent salient point about this when we see the Challenger Cup finals, right? These are these are pro am players, these are amateur players trying to make it over that next jump to be professional. Uh, does nerves come into play? And how nervous do you think tactical feed was coming into this one? Well, I don't necessarily see anything obvious in terms of nerves. I think that they need to work on more of their picks and ban strategy sure. and their positioning just a little bit slightly more. Be more mindful about the rotations from the jungler. You don't always have to take the 1v1 fights in the side lanes, whether you're Hunter or Solo. We saw both of them getting you know caught in a really bad spot because Apollo got sold by Nath earlier mm -hmm. on, which allowed her to just really take off and then expose the Gold Fury for Los Amigos to take. So. Tactical feed, they need to get a better job warding, spotting out these rotations, and then controlling it themselves. We'll see if the adjustments will pay off. We're headed into game number two of our semifinal matchup here of Los Amigos versus Tactical Feed. And wow, I mean, these guys are... Uh Production just reminded me that Cam was live. Thanks, guys. Uh, these guys are, I think Los Amigos are going to make quick work of tactical feet again. I think there was, it was so much more than just a great picks and bands phase. I think they, they were as dominant in every step of the game. And that's exactly what they're going to try to do for a second game in a row if they want to qualify to the SCL. The way they played that last game, that's an SCL caliber team, I would say, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. When I, when I asked you, when I ask you, you know, how, how strong tact or Los Amigos looked in that first game, that's really what it, where I was going. I mean, this is a team that's trying to fight their way to relegation. And I mean, this is a team that I could see already going head to head with some of the middle of the pack teams uh, in the SCL. So Los Amigos already getting their name out there. Well done. Standard bands across the way opens the door for Nemesis. The Susano was just not really effective for tactical feed, but they were afraid of Los Amigos picking it up here. And with the Guan Yu band, they left Nemesis wide open. So, but they got the Fafnir. Fafnir and Soul. There's just a lot of powerful characters right now. And I think it's more about what your team wants to play. We see uh, certain teams are support heavy in the pro leagues. So they'll opt for the Fafnir, right? Tricks Tank, uh, Pain to Beyond, et cetera. Whereas other squads are more jungle oriented. They'll opt for the Bacchus Nemesis combination, right? It's really about where does your team find their powerful carries? And Los Amigos, well, they're ready to spread it out. Robin, Bacchus, Nemesis, very scary draft. The Bacchus and the Robin was doing really good work for Los Amigos the last game. They're going to repeat it yet again. And this time around, tactical feat getting the Hunbats for their jungler. Now, they have to be so mindful about the aggression. All three characters from Los Amigos, just same thing could happen as the first game. And that's why I think Hunbats is the perfect selection. I think Bacchus and Nemesis really, uh, there's a game plan here. They, when we go in, this is what we want to do. Execution, heavy team composition. Hunbats excels whenever there's an execution te uh, heavy team composition because all of your ducks are in a row. You're ready. Okay, let's get in there. And then Hunbats says, nah, everybody's going to walk in separate directions. So there's, there's just nothing you can get your feet on top of. They afraid that the Neath was such a big important factor for Los Amigos in the solo lane. We saw those ganks with the World Weaver. You're gonna take that off the table. And with Soul being picked, that's surprising because they could have maybe picked up Neath themselves because mm -hmm. they had the next pick, but instead they're gonna go for the mobility that Giannis provides you. Soul is gonna remain in the dual lane with the Fafnir. I, I really like the Neath pick, or the Neath ban rather. I think the Neath ban was necessary, pretty much. Like you said, when you're panning out junglers, it's it you're never going to reach the end right when it comes to bands you want to ban ideas and mindsets what does Fenrir do different from any of the other junglers that you banned out pretty much nothing but Neath does something very different from the other hunters that world weaver creates a very different situation so tactical feed ban out Neath and now they force Los Amigos to go with Jing Wei which instead of rotate instead of non-rotation because of the ultimate you're going to see more Jingwei physical rotations, I think, out of Los Amigos. This is such a nice comp out of Los Amigos. I already see it in my head that Nemesis is going to be so aggressive, forcing all in onto somebody. That somebody's going to run away. And the Vulcan ultimate is going to try to confirm the kill from a distance. But look, yeah. Odin, last pick for tactical feet. Going to try to lock down this Nemesis and Vulcan. Going to try. They're going to try. Nemesis... Bacchus Vulcan is the the quintessential composition, I feel. I think that 
Right, you get the Nemesis ult, the Bacchus belly flop into some big mage damage. And Vulcan is, I mean, the definition of some big mage damage, Anatoly. So the combination that Los Amigos have here is is absolutely incredible. And I am not afraid of it whatsoever. Tactical Feed, on the other hand, they have to work a little bit more. That's true. They have to synergize their ultimates a little bit effectively between the Odin and the Hun Bats. They have a good purification burner on the Hun Bats, but they don't really have that great secondary purification usage. They have just a lot of damage between right. the Soul and the Giannis. There's just they have the space control with the Odin and the huge crowd control with the Hun Bats, but not much more crowd control than that. Yeah, they've got individual stuff coming out from the Fafnir, and really, to be honest with you, Tully, Fafnir Soul is a scary very scary lane so we'll have to see how well tactical feed can make this lane work i would say this time around that tactical feed were to be the more early game oriented composition odin in the soul lane gonna try to out clear the robin and robin's gonna try to exchange some poke but he's gonna be behind in the minion department whereas the soul fafnir they have decent aggression but you're also dealing with this bakas jing wei one belly flop can set up the jing wei's gust of air and you can be constantly getting juggled and the same thing works in the jungle as well i think hun bats although not very effective levels one through four has the ultimate once he hits level five and nemesis is really just uh well I'm going to eat my words here. Odin's going to fall down to the first blood to a nemesis, but totally. why don't you break down how rare that is? So it's a nice gank from the jungler. They recognize that the only way Odin's going to clear the wave, he uses the bird bomb jump combination. And how do you punish that? You bring in your jungler on top. Uh, we saw a couple times where I think it was Omega's Hercules against mm -hmm. Cyclone's Odin taking advantage of the level to jump, pulling and pushing him under the tower. And this is a different way of punishing the Odin, bringing in your jungler for the secondary slow. Exactly. Nemesis, pretty much the antithesis of an early game god, but just by way of using... Uh, abusing the jump kit from the Odin. Doesn't matter if that was a nemesis or, I mean, you could have had, what is the worst jungler you can think of, Tony? Sir Cat. Worst, not best. Oh yeah, I thought you meant like uh, to to get ganked by. No, I mean like, who is the worst character you want to bring to the jungle? Maybe a Hades, okay? You could get ganked at level two Hades and that would still be a kill okay, now because I see what of what mean. Odin was doing using his jump there. I thought you meant like who was the worst jungler that you don't want to see like, oh. like getting like who's the worst possible ganker no i don't want to see it sir Ket, no, near my not at all. and you know it's funny we haven't seen too much sir Ket. just seeing her recently played by anister at the uh epsilon invitational wonder if we'll see more of her this weekend really great pressure out of this box jing way look at that they're clearing the wave they're poking out the members from tactical feed there's just not much they can do right now mm. this Baka Xing Wei, providing a lot of trouble. Yeah, they're, they're doing such a strong job here uh, in the left lane as well as the right lane, Los Amigos. They have pressure on both outer lanes and even in the mid lane uh, here at the Vulcan, doing a lot of good work. Double meatball even. And the poke allowing Nemesis to hit level 5 off of that earlier gank should be able to look for a play in one of the side lanes. They could also collapse onto the red buff because of all the pressure that the Bacchus and Xing Wei has implemented as well. Here you can see the ultimate coming. Level 5 on the Nemesis. Trying to find the gank out of the mid lane, but will be spotted out by the Hun Bats. Gonna get forced to use the purification, and now this Hun Bats... That's going to be a nice target. There's a belly flop. This could be really bad. Stun. And a couple of bases coming out from Jing Wei will confirm the kill onto Jelly. So the Fafnir Soul Lane will be the first one to suffer a death as far as the dual lane is concerned. Two kills to none. And Los Amigos again off to a quick hot start. Speed buff has respawned, instantly recognizing this is Dr. L applying the pressure. The rotations are coming also from the Vulcan and the jungler. The ultimate is good, but does it steal it? Look at the fancy jump coming out of camping solo. Jumps over the ultimate from Vulcan. Well done. And now Layers of Death will be the one to trade his life. Mr. Teep gets credit for that. Finding the kill onto the Nemesis, but Dr. L is not done yet. He wants to find the return kill. The Odin makes the rotation, but he's going to possibly have to run away. Yeah, the, the 1v2, not going to pull it off for Robin. And then as soon as he has a friend rotate in, obviously everybody runs and scatters. Speed buff was stolen, and now red buff being stolen with the Intoxicate. And a great escape plan coming out of Cameron using the ulti to not only confirm the red, but also have an escape weight. 
just a lot of aggression coming out from Los Amigos. And, you know, when we talk about these best of threes, we generally talk about momentum in a positive light. Look how well you guys did Could continue and keep it going. Los Amigos seem to be very aggressive here, almost more aggressive than their first game where they had the Fender to allow them to be aggressive. Is this a case where the momentum might be negative, where they kind of feel like they still have that lead from last game? Well, if they're able to constantly take away these buffs and they don't lose too many members in the process, only losing one, and they don't give up anything in return, when they that one member respawns, now you have your own speed buff to take, your own red and your own blue. You're going to extend that lead just so much. It's all about the objectives, not necessarily the kills, because you could still bully out somebody from a lane and not find the kill, and they're gonna their jungle is going to be exposed as a result. So the the loss of gold that Nemesis doesn't. The gold that Nemesis doesn't receive because she's out of commission by being killed really will just be made up because the gold is sitting in the jungle on your own side after the invasion. So Absolutely. And as we're going to have a rotation from Tactical Feet, trying to find the return gang. Fear no evil being used. Nemesis didn't have the purification, but it doesn't matter. She's going to try to chase down this Hunbats. Won't be enough, though. She's going to be surrounded. And as soon as Fafnir and Yana show up, she'll walk away. Rotation from Jelly on the backside, however. Ultimate already used. And there's the Odin cage that'll separate some players. Vulcan ult goes down, but still jumped on over and avoided for the second time. Vulcan still able to survive, but Dr. L finding the kill yet again onto Joltek, extending the lead. The Odin teleport is down, so after getting the fire child elementals, he's going to grab another wave and a half from there, and he's going to separate the gap so wide. He's already two levels ahead. It's going to be three very soon. And Robin is a character you don't want this to happen on. It is a character that now, this is a weird statement, but but back me up here, totally. All characters do well when they're ahead, obviously. But Robin excels even more so when he's ahead. I would say definitely because of the fact that he has a slow in his kit. And if you're giving him too much gold, he's going to be able to finish off the Frostbound. And now he's getting another kill Ooh. onto the jungler. The speed buff is about to respawn, and the Giannis just has to hope that this Robin doesn't come. There's also the, the shield aspect of Robin's kit as well, which also really hurts from ahead. Absolutely. Now this Odin has learned his lesson, not wanting to bird bomb <laughs> jump any longer. He doesn't know where this nemesis is. Now the problem for Odin is he did a great job, right? He, he made a mistake and then he fixed it. That is exactly what you have to do in Smite. But unfortunately, one mistake seems to have been enough. And speed buff was dropped. Hanbats is going to be able to pick it up, but he didn't receive any of that gold or experience. Giannis was really afraid of the Hanbats not being able to pick it up. Now, going to try to make a rotation. Nemesis going to find the ultimate, but you can't double dash through the cage, buddy. <laughs> nice cage. Saved the life of Odin, which was definite death if that cage wasn't used, by the way. So, Michael Chaco. Going to go ahead and provide some backfire damage and Cameron making the rotation to the right hand side. But Los Amigos get their pressure on the right side and will even try to steal up up. Cameron from behind getting the knock up onto the Giannis. Going to get stunned out. Finding the kill from a distance is the Vulcan. I love the, the play for it that Xing Wei makes, but Vulcan just says, oh, no worries. I've got it. I got it. No big deal. So Vulcan finds his first kill of the game. Important ultimate there. Vulcan has had two ultimates that have been on the money. But they were, one, the monkey jumped over it, and then two, the dragon used his ultimate transformation to avoid the damage. Finally, the third one that actually hit, actually hits. And the gang from Xingwei was about to get negated by the beautiful wrath coming out of Piri, but that Vulcan all you just can't avoid it. Too wide of a radius, and without having a, enough mana for a portal, couldn't really escape. Yeah, it's a whole tower, pretty much, that Vulcan ultimate, and that'll push him up a little bit higher on the player damage. But everybody's just looking at the Bacchus Robin. Bacchus, not a, not a surprise to really see him up top. I always joke around, and I call him the Magical Warrior. He He's very much like a bracket in the sense that he just brings so much damage to the table. Talk about the Robin being a magical damage dealer? No, the Bacchus. Oh, the Bacchus. Okay, I, I'm sorry. He's like a magical warrior. Yeah, I would definitely say the Bacchus. And that's why a lot of these Bacchuses go for the shoes of the Mad Guy as a result. And now Cameron not having enough mana to really escape from this. Trying to juke as long as she could, but unfortunately takes a spill. Second kill for tactical feet, but they can't really get anything off of this, unfortunately. Even still, Tolly, that is a very important kill. That is the first kill 
even going back to game number one, that looked like tactical feed, made a plan, and intended, and worked off of it. And that'll give them the opportunity for the Gold Fury. Here comes Bacchus, and he will not get the steal. Tactical feed successfully secure the Gold Fury. There's a beautiful Fear No Evil making sure that the Bacchus couldn't use the Intoxicate afterwards. However, two kills going in the way of Los Amigos, finding the knockup onto this Fafnir. They need to find a third kill if they really want to extend their lead even further. And it looks like Amigos will do that. Layers of Death pick up one. So the gold tree goes to tactical feed, but as my good friend Dry Bear says, at what cost? Three players down and El Los Amigos going directly for the mid tower. With four, I'm sorry, five members here from Los Amigos. They're getting this tier one tower. They're going to push on over to the speed, but from tactical feed, Hunbats is around the corner, but he uses Fear No Evil to secure the gulf. You're not going to be able to contest this one. I love the speed buff invade, Anatoly. I think a lot of players, a lot of teams, they don't go for that. The speed buff invade, and that the speed buff invade comes from all the knowledge that Los Amigos have about the location of tactical feed. And now, with Golfier being down, there's going to be a lot of pressure onto this solo lane. The Hunbats makes the rotation, but it's a level 13 Robin with Breastplate of Valor. Even Giannis here, this Robin just doesn't care. Going to go up and down, trying to find the kill. One Finds Joltak. He's not done yet. He already took the 1v3 fight. And look at the Giannis and the monkey. So... The monkey engages alongside the Odin, and they can't kill the Robin. Robin gets the kill, and you can just see Giannis and Hunbats just sort of go, all right. <laughs> just gonna, I guess I walk away here, like, what do we do, right? Just and that's what we were talking about with respects to giving a Robin a lead. Not finding the kill, and Los Amigos finding the tier one tower and the blue buff yet again. Just objective mindset, and Cameron bullying away the soul. Going to be able to clear out this wave and still play aggressive. Hunbat, now he's like, all right, the gank didn't work in soul lane. Let me nope. see if I can gank the duo lane instead. And looking for it. Here he comes. Does have the ultimate available. Jumping in, won't find a slow, won't find the teleport. And, well, pretty safe. Cameron just... S keys and finds himself safely underneath the tower. Still, I guess it's walked backwards. Walked backwards. <laughs> Still being level 10 is the Hunbats. Doesn't have that second relic. Definitely would want to see him have the blink just to be able to get that that surprise gank, Fear mm -hmm. No Evil. Because now without it, he has to kind of come from the side and he gets spotted out. The jump wasn't connected. The monkey bounce was off the mark because of the nice dash from Xing Wei. And now look at this. Los Amigos, they know they have the lead in team fight wise. So what are they going to do? They're just going to group up as a unit. Four members pushing this tier one on the left hand side. Exactly. Same strategy that we saw in game number one. Los Amigos identify the fact that they have the lead and they're not afraid to use it. Pushing up and grouping up is four. They're pretty much daring tactical feed. Los Amigos says, hey, look, we're up 4,000 gold. We'll beat you in a team fight because we have more items. So we're going to group up and you can fight us if you want. And if you do, it'll be the wrong choice. Just ask Mr. Jelly. Mr. Jelly barely able to escape. Hunbats coming from the side. Going to use Fear No Evil onto point. the Vulcan, but there's just not enough follow-up in the rotation from this Robin trying to find the kill onto Jelly. Vulcan ult from a distance didn't matter because Jelly already fell. Mr. Teep falls down to layers of death, and Peary going to suffer the same consequence as well. Mr. Doctor, excuse me, Lil Caves, left that one out. One, two, three, four. That's both the time and how simple Los Amigos made it look, taking down their opposition in under 30 minutes of total play. Wow. That was really quick. Now, I'm surprised because this was the semifinals. The winner of this would have advanced to the finals. And Tactical Feed, they felt like they were so defeated that they didn't even want to play it out anymore. I mean, sometimes you know better than I, right? I, I've, I've competed in uh, the, the Pinewood Derby in Boy Scouts in 2003, as well as uh, I think I won a volleyball tournament in, in the eighth grade. But you're, you're an ex-pro gamer. Getting into your head here, that's tough. They just got stopped. So, I mean... Even here, that's a situation where you can get, you can become your own worst enemy. That's true. But at the end of the day, when the games matter like this, you have to just play it out because you never know. There could be a, a Phoenix dive, a, sure. you know, a Titan, a Fountain dive even, where it could easily bring back the game at any given moment. Well, unfortunately for Tactical Feed, they seem to have known what was in the cards, and it was all just many, many layers of death, both the game and the jungler. Uh, really, the jungler for Los Amigos has been out of control, and not just this Nemesis game, the Fenrir game really is what did it for me. Yeah, the Fenrir, like, he was forced into Fenrir. He didn't mind at all. It just synergized so well with the Ryzen in game number one. In game number two, instantly, they came in with a game plan. They're like, okay, you guys have Odin in the solo, and we're just going to gank it right off the bat, which put the Robin 
also in a really great spot. A being able to 1v3 in the solo lane by himself and yeah. finding a kill. Just from minute one to minute, well, 12. That was as many minutes as there was in game number two. Uh, just dominance from these guys. And like you said, Anatoly, uh, both both of these teams will be headed to relegation. The squad on the other side of the semis and, of course, Los Amigos. So welcome to the relegations. Coming up next will be finals. So stay tuned, get a drink, and we'll be right back here at High Res TV.